Prokofiev, I think, has a much, in a way, has a much broader spectrum, both emotional, in terms of atmosphere, mood, if you think of, of his first concerto, third piano concerto, the, the first symphony, Shostakovich doesn't really have a lot of music of that kind. Also, um, Prokofiev, I think, in a way, had a real talent for life, for writing um, melodies. Long, beautiful tunes, if you think of Romeo and Juliet, the Fifth Symphony. Shostakovich had it too, if you think of his uh, waltz from the second uh, suite. Um, he knew how to write a hit tune, but it wasn't necessarily his main interest. Um, I find always that Shostakovich has a stronger impact right away, so he affects you on almost animal, visceral level. Um, whereas with Prokofiev, I find it is sometimes a more complex, complex effect. So it might not be the same sheer power the moment you feel it as with Shostakovich, but it operates maybe on more levels and maybe in a way is more complex. But I find those those comparisons very, very hard to make because um, both Prokofiev and Shostakovich had a had written a huge amount of music and we never know what their lives and um, music would have sounded like if not for for history, if not for the regime, if not for the attacks they suffered by the party. With Prokofiev, as I said, we had more of an idea because the music he wrote in his early years shows us what kind of music he, he did write. Um, I also find that Prokofiev does allow himself sometimes moments of pureness of lyricism, of unguarded emotion, whereas with Shostakovich they are exceedingly rare. Almost everything is, as I said, is presented from behind a mask, and it's very hard to know what, what's really going on behind it. And of course, with Prokofiev we have much more solo piano music of the highest level, because with Shostakovich I find one of the reasons why I wanted to do this arrangement is because we don't really have piano music um, solo piano music by him of this depth and strength. We have some very good piano music and we have brilliant chamber music with piano and the concerto chord. But if you think of solo music, the quartets are for me a level, a level above. Tchaikovsky, it's interesting. I find that Tchaikovsky, as opposed to every single Russian composer I can think of, had real innocence. Because this is a quality which neither Rachmaninoff, nor Prokofiev, nor Shostakovich, nor Mussorgsky, they, they just don't have it. If you think of this utterly pure emotion, I think it's not it's not by chance that it was Tchaikovsky who wrote Eugene Onegin as, a, as, a, as an opera. Because um, the kind of pure emotion which Tatiana has for for Onegin. I, I I can't think of another a composer who could have written the music to support that and to 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 bring it to life. And um, if Shostakovich is melodramatic, I think he knows how to press buttons which make us feel very strong basic emotions. So, um, if you think of his opera, Lady Margaret of Mitsensk, its power is that when you listen to it, you cannot not feel. You cannot distance yourself from it. The music reaches out and grabs you, and it forces you to, to experience that. And those emotions, hate, fear, also very almost animal kind of hope and passion, um, they are really strong and yeah basic is the word they're, they're they're not really complex and i think because they're so deeply ingrained in us this is why his works can often affect us like this prokofi i find is often more multi-layered in the shades and nuances of his of his emotional um effect on listeners mm -hmm. 